Well, Mary Ann Taylor, I am so happy that we're speaking right now. It's so wonderful to see you and, you know, speak with you from your home in Toronto. Likewise. <laughs> oh. Likewise. Thank you for agreeing to share your experiences and just to have a conversation about that time that, well, I mean, we were in a company at the same time <laughs> back in the yes. day. I mean, you were a company member from like 1988 to 1994. Yes, yes. And do you remember those days in 88 and we were in the school together, you and I? That's oh, right. That's amazing. right. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. remember when we started rooming together? <laughs> <laughs> As I always say, there's never adultery moment. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, those oh. those uh, those wonderful tours that we were on, and amazing. Yeah. Oh, we'll get into that. But um, you know, I really want to know how you um, you know came to be a performer. You know, with Toronto Dance Theatre. What was it like being a company member and coming to TDT from South Africa? Yes, yes, yes. Going down memory lane over the last few days. Oh, wow. Since you and I had a chance to chat. Um, shoo. Um, well, it goes back. Like I started dancing at eight. Okay. And my mom used to do ballroom. But for her, let's say because of the time she couldn't compete okay. and it was the one thing that she loved so much so she got me into dance and at our primary school we had um ballet and uh, at primary school with each year we went up another level or we had to do let's say the rad exams yes yes <laughs> and oh wow what a time so as a as a like let's say as a little person remembering um you know like going through that time remembering now um for me it was a really scary time because the, the times that i grew up in which is part of the apartheid let's say system and i yep. just I'm going to say when I started school, it just started. So my memory of, of school was that of nothing but being scared all the time. Mm. So being in ballet was like, let's say for me, that my mom, I would say kind of pushed me to get into, but we were lucky enough that at the primary school, we had a, a stunning ballet teacher. Huh. And Mr. Cecil Jacobs. <laughs> oh, my word, you stand upright and away you go. <laughs> All up those knees, it was stunning. So then from there, um, my next part of my journey was um, we had a physical uh, training or education or uh, once a year, there'd be like an inspector coming by to each school now remember we had levels we had of course the white school I was in the color school and then the black schools okay. so she would go around to each school and so she would choose um um at the, we were called um um little leaves leaves like like little leaves and in Afrikaans it means silver blarkis Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds nicer in uh, in, in, in 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 Afrikaans than it does in yeah. English. Anyway, <laughs> so that's where dance for me continued, and it kept me out of the like. Let's say it kept me in the safe zone. Mm -hmm. But at the same time as it kept me in the safe zone, all this other stuff was happening around the schools and the government. And, you know, it was just, it felt like chaos. Mm. Anyway, silver blarkies or silver <laughs> leaves turned into a um, silver leaf youth company. Now we're at high school. And so the youth company became um, like, let's say, 12 to 15 dancers. And in the meantime, I was working on finishing off my ballet exams. 
which again at the time was a little bit more of a challenge but I was I'm gonna say I'm going to use the word blessed a lot. Yes. Despite it all, um, I had this amazing teacher that came from Canada. Really? Oh, yes. She danced at the Toronto Dance Theatre. What? And do you remember Babar? Yes, I do. Yes, I, actually, she... I actually was in Babar. Yes. Did you now, ever do Babar? No. No. <laughs> no. It was kind of just as I was coming in, Baba was slowly going. Oh, okay. So she was part of Baba, and that's where she also met her husband here in, in Canada at the Toronto Dance Theatre. Yes, I love your face. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember her name? Do you remember her? Yes, Jennifer van Papendorp. Wow. Yeah. And we're going back some time now. And originally, both Jennifer and her husband, Johan, were from South Africa. But they came to Canada to do dance. Oh, and they yeah. ended up at TDT doing classes and taking classes and et cetera, et cetera. They didn't quite get to the company because they were more kind of um, um, wanting to teach and wanting to do and, you know, stuff like that so when Jennifer and her husband moved with their two kids to Cape Town oh my word <laughs> I feel like life completely changed because she had um, um, both the um, as the times were yeah and what she learned when she was in Canada okay so quiet miss me <laughs> she took me under her wing and she started training. I mean, all 12 or 15 of us. And so um, a long story short, when I finished high school, what was I going to do? The <laughs> yeah. only choice was to teach ballet. So I finished all the exams in order to go to university of ballet. But it was really difficult to get in. So that was when Jennifer connected you with the School of Toronto Dance Theatre, which was where I first met you. And you know, Miss Rose, I have to tell you this. <laughs> Seeing you at the Toronto Dance Theatre School yes. was rather intimidating, but for the first time I felt at home. Really? Yeah. Well, well I didn't intimidate you, did I? No. Remember, like... After I came from South Africa and Jenny was like, okay, you're going to remember this and this and this and the rest, don't worry about it. And I'm, I said to her, well, <laughs> what if somebody is spying on me? What if somebody is? And she says, that's not even the least of your worries. Just go there and do your thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> she was like amazing. So for me to be in like, let's say, where there was, everybody was there. At TDT, everybody. Yeah. And when I say everybody, red, blue, black, white, yellow, coffee with milk, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I love that expression <laughs> from you. <laughs> oh, it's true. It, it's, it was... Yeah. And so for me, it was like the first time that the school was so welcoming. I had to, I arrived late because the papers didn't come in time. Okay. And even before I got to the school, what the school had already done with Jenny mm -hmm. was, wow. Who was the principal at the time? Or or was it, it was it Billy Ann Balai? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. Yeah. Billy Ann Balai was the principal. And I was only going to stay for six months. She encouraged me to stay longer. Okay. And with her and a letter that I still have from Trish, oh. that's how I got to stay. Really? Yeah. So, yes. Um. So between Jenny, Billy Ann, and Trish, yeah. um, let's say they cahoots and said, we got to bring <laughs> her back no matter what. Oh. So I couldn't believe how lucky I was oh my word coming back what am I going to do anyway I did come back 
and the rest is history. <laughs> so you did do three years though, right, with the school? I did, yes, yes. Because then um, the year when the company went to Seoul, Korea. Oh yes, 1988. That's it, that's it. Yeah. That's when, um, let's say, phew, I'm going to say, the few and oh my word and few and oh my word <laughs> over and over, you know, was yeah. it boggled my mind that somebody like me yes. could be this lucky. Wow. And like, how was that ever going to work? Because, you know, something mm-hmm. in the years that I have, like, let's say, spent dance, mm-hmm. as far as dance was concerned, it was disappointment after disappointment okay no you can't yes you can oh no you can't and so you can you can't so eventually it was just like okay I throw my hands up not gonna bother you was you were asking about um um uh, getting into the company and how I got there yes my first year as a, as an apprentice which was the year of 88 okay how about knock your socks off, make sure that you land on your feet <laughs> and do it all over again. And when I say that, Rosemary, it was, uh, I remember tours that we little silver leaf, um, um, the group that we had, we toured where we could to the, the areas that we were allowed to go mm-hmm. um, in a, we call it a combi and it's a van, you know, oh, like yeah. a yeah. six, eight seater. And there was <laughs> eight in one and eight in the other. <laughs> plus our luggage, plus the lights, the yeah. floor, tape. And every day, where we slept was in schools Mm. on the floor with our sleeping bags now remember we're fast forwarding 1988 amazing hotels (laughs) you even get a video and then on top of it whatever it was eight or ten dollars an hour your paycheck was there knock your socks up again Yes. And over and over, it was just like, um, I'm going to say gobsmack after gobsmack, mm. over and over. And then now when we were starting to tour, that's a whole other amazing, let's say, story. Yeah, so just to be clear, like it's, uh, South Africa, Cape Town was where you're born and raised, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes. South Africa, Cape Town. It's such a lovely place. And when you're there, you don't really notice what's really happening underneath, let's say, the mm. tablecloth, you know. Yeah. But, yes. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't change my experiences for the world. I wouldn't say, oh, I wish that I had grown up differently. Or, you know, I, I believe that all those experiences led me to 1988 yes of course of course you and know all, all the people that were put there to help you That's you know get it. to you know get to canada and yes. dance and there is no way you were going anywhere you're an exquisite <laughs> dancer and mover oh my gosh please i remember those beautiful extensions and feet and oh, flexibility and really yeah wow you know, tell me that at the time or even now, and I'll say, you're probably <laughs> on something. In hindsight, it seems okay, yes, but at the time, it's it's always, you know, our the, the sense of ourselves and who we are is very different, right? And Completely, yeah, completely. And when you're blessed to be surrounded by, let's say, the people of the Toronto Dance Theatre. Yeah. Um, and... This is not, and when I say that, it's completely from the bottom of my heart yeah. because the support, the it was a whole new world for me. Huh. A whole 
new world. <laughs> and that's like, oh, it makes me want to faint just saying whole new world. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, talk about touring though, because we talked a little bit about that. And I, I didn't remember until you actually shared your experiences, but yeah, talk, talk about that. Cause that was wow. fascinating. Wow. See, touring for me had a whole different connotation from what I, let's say, remember as touring when I, when I was in South Africa, because mm -hmm. we could only be in like a small little um, bubble and we couldn't expand. It's sort of like, you know, wanting to get to the Olympics, but you can't, you can only compete with the people around you. Mm -hmm. So even if you, no matter how good you were, it didn't matter. So um, when I came to Toronto with all of that and the fear being inside of me so very much when it came to touring it was it didn't it didn't feel right to me mm -hmm. that wow yes we're staying in this amazing hotel we show up at the theater mm -hmm. we don't have to hang lights we don't have to check the sound <laughs> we don't have to you know make sure that the the theater is swept and the chairs were put up properly <laughs> and that was fascinating tour after tour after tour and sleeping on a bed oh come on now wow. that was a huge deal wow. now the catch of it all um for me was let's say the um uh, Brian always liked to say the albatross around your neck <laughs> was having a South African passport. Mm. So having my passport, because at the time I only had um, immigration status. Okay. And so everywhere I went, I had to have that extra little stamp from the, um, uh, the uh, from a particular consulate, wherever we're going, to make mm -hmm. sure that I did get that little visa in order to, let's say, get to Seoul or get to Germany or get to wherever it is that we were going to go. So um, now imagine this, Nick. This is even before my my experience to Seoul. Uh, we travelled left really early in the morning we flew to Miami I remember it like it happened yesterday then we got to um, Miami and there was like a 12 hour wait for our flight to Seoul now remember at the time South Africans were banned but that's it I wasn't into politics at all because it just scared me yeah and so Unbeknownst to me, yeah. the company had already gone to the Seoul um, um, consulate and they said, we are, have been invited in our group. They gave the whole story in our group. We have a South African oh. and how can we get it to come with us? We're yeah. not going without it because um, 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 Mr. Kenny, no? Ken Pearson, he, yeah. He spoke for me and he was yeah. not going to take no as an answer. Huh. So now I didn't know all of this. I didn't even know that South Africa was banned. Oh, yeah. I knew South Africa was in trouble with the world because they didn't like what was happening over there. Yeah. So we, uh, everything was supposed to be okay when we got to Seoul. The lady at the looking at your past, she said, oh, um, you know, she apologized and she said, wait one minute. And she took my password and I didn't think much of it. And then they called me to one side and, you know, they put me in a little room and mm. then Ron Snipe followed me. And um, I think Ken Pearson must have told him, go with her. Mm. So we're waiting in this room. It's about 6.30 in the morning. We're waiting. One o'clock in the afternoon, we're still waiting. Oh. Two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. Finally, at about 6.30, um, um, our tour guide comes into the room, 
because Ron had been asking, you know, can you let us know what's going on? And they were just apologetic, didn't say mm. very much. And anyway, eventually, by this time, the company had already gone and they're floating around Korea. <laughs> <laughs> How that would funny. be me floating around <laughs> Korea and visiting the bazaars. And yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my word. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> and anyway, so he comes into the room. He looks rather mad. And again, I haven't got a clue what's going on. So he said, he always said was, don't look left or right. Look, keep your head down and walk straight to the car and don't say anything. Oh my God. Is this Ken Pearson? Nope. Oh. This was um, the Korean tour guide. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So Ron and I behaved ourselves nicely and we followed him, <gasps> got into the car. And then once we got out the car, he said, Now, you don't talk to anybody and never ever be by yourself. Oh. Boom, got in the car and left. And I said, What happened? Why? What's wrong? And then yeah. Ron said to me, well, South Africans have been banned from the Olympics. Oh, my oh, word. Oh, my goodness. Then I started shaking and thinking, now what do I do? Like, nope. And when I got to the room, yes. do you know what? What? Ken Pearson had a bouquet of flowers for me. Oh, man. Because he would known throughout the day what was going on. Okay. And then he came to the room, gave me this huge hug. He said, now we can enjoy ourselves. Wow. And so I just made sure that I was never by myself. Right. Because who knows? Who? But that particular um, um, uh, soul career was fabulous. The care that each and every one showed me. Because mm -hmm. the company now was aware that, listen, man, we may have to change the choreography because she may not be allowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Yes. And, but somehow, I, I, I truly know from the bottom of my heart that Ken Pearson really fought for me. Oh, he was and, amazing. He was he was our, our TDT's company manager for many years, and yes. yeah, but he did pass away in 1994, yeah. which was very really sad. Wow! Um, because that happened to be, you know, that was a the first season for Christopher as artistic director, and yes. but he oh. yeah he was an incredible incredible person. Yeah. And I had no idea that he did all this for you. He did. And you know something? Every now and then when we were in, at like, let's say at home mm -hmm. doing rehearsals, he'd call me up and say, okay, how are things going? Where are things standing with the password? And then again, unbeknownst to me, he'd be on the phone to immigration. Oh, wow. Yeah. So anyway, finally... I got, of course, the status, um, Canadian, um, 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 what's it called? My Canadian Papers. Okay. And he wasn't around to see that. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And, and likewise, you know, with talk about touring, as, as easy as it is just across the border to go to the States, because of that passport, mm -hmm. every time I would go to the U.S., I would need a police escort. What? I don't even remember that. Yes, I would need a police escort. And every time we went to the States, um, um, there was always either Ken Pearson yes. or somebody that would say, stand with me. It could be Penny. It okay. could be, at the time, was Jane. Remember Jane? Uh, she was also a tour manager. And that was one of the years when we went to Germany, when she broke her foot, remember? <laughs> she was like um, mum to all of us. She would always say, come and stand next to me before we would show our passports. And then here we go. Okay, pull us aside. Then at least I always had somebody with me. Yes. And okay, now we've got to go into a special room. 
And now we've got the rundown of questions as in who, what, when, where, why, and Jane says she's with the company, there's 18 members, here are their names, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing there, we've been invited there, and she's part of the company. Okay, now we get ready and here comes one of the escorts with us and he keeps a little bit of a distance to make sure that I got on the plane. Wow. And then on the other side, there yes. was another person to make sure that I'm going with the company. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. But again, every step of the way, every single person always either gave me a hug or said, wow, we did it. You got through <laughs> yes. every time. That was amazing. Oh, amazing. My Germany, remember Germany? Yes. Germany, we toured uh, 16 different cities in two weeks. That was a big tour. But some of the cities were close together and we could just like have a show in the morning and then in the afternoon we'd go to another place. And now we're coming back from straight from Frankfurt. Yes. We're supposed to be going to Ottawa to represent Canada at the National Arts Centre. Remember every summer there's a um Yeah, like the Canada Dance. Exactly. Yeah, Canada, Canada, Canada Dance Festival. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So anyway, um my German visa was expiring on that day. So all I had to do was just get on a plane to get back to Canada because I still had my Canadian visa. Okay. Well they decided to give me a really hard time and not to let me onto the plane with the rest of you guys. Lucky for me, you were my roommate and you <laughs> could take my suitcase to the hotel. <laughs> and meanwhile, um, Jane with her little hop along <laughs> ankle um, was fussing around the airport, but remember it was Sunday. So Sunday, most of like the immigration was closed, especially um, um, in Germany. There was, wasn't anything really open, but there was a small little office with a little, that wasn't a pleasant experience that mm. I had to go into. I couldn't go with Jane. I had to go by myself mm. where they had to give me that extra extension so that I could go to Bonn or we could go to Bonn. So, Anyway, Jane was never without an option. Hmm. And she was on the, I mean, those days we didn't have cell phones. Right. I call it the little nickel box. The yeah. Little nickel box and, you know, calling card. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> anyway, with calling card in hand, she managed to find us a place in Bonn because that was a place that she knew um, a colleague of hers um, in immigration for Canada in Bonn. Huh. So wow. we took the train, got to the hotel, had a shower. We had no clothes, nothing with us. Wow. Anyway, we did wash our underwear though. <laughs> day yes. <laughs> for oh, the next sweet. day anyway so we finally got up and the immigration was open and we got there and thinking that this is going to be a breeze it's going to be fine and a long story short they decide to give us a hard time oh wow nope, we can't <laughs> do it nope we can't do it but I was blessed again with Jane because mm. she was never without an option Huh. Finally, they gave us the extension we needed. Wow, okay. Phew, now we had a little bit of time. <laughs> and in Germany, when they say 122 is yes. not even a second later, <laughs> yes. 122. And, and then I shouldn't have let Jane out of my sight. <laughs> <laughs> We, we went our separate ways. I thought, oh, I just look around a little bit. She wanted to look around a bit. 122, there's no train. Oh. I'm on the platform pacing, pacing. I said, no, this, it was already stressful over the last two days. I can't lose Jane. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm marching up and down. Where is Jane? 
this one day the train was late oh and Jane comes yes. hopping along <laughs> and she says oh the train's not late <laughs> Jane, yes, the train is late. You're late. <laughs> and phew, I could finally breathe when we got on the train to Frankfurt and could get on the plane to Ottawa. Ottawa, wow, oh, yes. Yo. Wow. Yo. Anyway, oh. <laughs> so I couldn't wait to get my papers. Anyway, when I finally did, I just... I said my own quiet prayer and thank you to Ken Pearson because yeah. I know he had a huge, he played a huge role in, let's say, my getting to that point. Yes, yes. You know, and then after that, it felt a lot better. But there's not one thing that I would say shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah. Not, I mean, how lucky can we be, eh, you and I, that we got to work with Patricia Beatty, um, yeah. Peter Randazzo, yes. even if it means that you were dancing with a shower curtain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you remember a simple melody? I do. And who else was there, like Batman and... Superman. Oh, oh yes, all those costumes. Yes. All the superheroes. And the superheroes. Yes, yes. Now, I don't know how a costume with a, a shower curtain can be a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> but I had the shower curtain on, but yo, it was a blast. So what were some of your favorite pieces to, <gasps> to perform? You know what? I can't even say there's one over the other. Yeah. Yeah, I can't even say. Because I was thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I can't even think of one over the other because each one of them was so deeply special. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And regardless if it was choreographed on you or already from, like, uh, the generation before, mm -hmm. it was i mean how do you all i can say amazing amazing and amazing next <laughs> question <laughs> well i just want to say i mean i remember like one of my favorite pieces of watching you in um was james kadelka's 15 <gasps> heterosexual duets and um i just thought that uh he beautifully choreographed you know, the duet, like with um, Michael, Sean, Marie, and yes. yourself, you know, like, um, wow. and I think you danced with, did you dance with Christopher in one of the duets? Or who no. else did you, who else did you dance with in that? Um, it was Michael, Sean. Yeah. And you know what, actually, you're right. I think it was Christopher. Yeah. Oh, good. I know. Yes. But the other piece I remember too was like um, was Gaia, and there's a <gasps> beautiful picture of a uh, photo of yourself and Trish in in uh, rehearsal, and you looking at her. <gasps> I think it's you know speaking about the work and just like oh wow, Gaia! Oh my word! Sure, I don't think I slipped from the day I learned the play, the piece, yeah. until the day I performed it, and then I don't think I ever got over it. Oh, uh, what was so special it was, about it? Guy was represented by Vision Television, and oh. it was turned into a story called The Last One. Really? And it was represented at the Earth Summit, or presented at the Earth Summit, huh. and the two astronauts, Peter Russell, and Roberta Landmark, I believe. I, I, I got her last name wrong, but they presented that at the Earth Summit. And they talked Gaia, they talked about Gaia as being the last one left on the Earth and what we had done to the Earth. And now Gaia comes back to life to tell her story to the last ones that are still living. Wow. Yeah, somewhere 
um, somewhere I have the video of last one. Vision Television, they recorded it. And then um, the voice or the narrator of the story was Jackie Burroughs. Really? Yes. Yes, wow. she told the story. Yes. And then remember after um, Gaia, we, there was um, Dancing the Goddess that Trish did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so those are, I mean, yeah, there's not one that I could say um, surpasses the other because they all were so special. Yes, Gaia was beyond knock your socks off. <laughs> um, um, and what it had done for me to have mm -hmm. somebody believe in me that much mm -hmm. to want me to do their piece, mm -hmm. especially, you know, one of the founders, Patricia yeah. Beatty, um, who was, shoot, beyond instrumental in changing so many lives of which I've been blessed to be one of them. Yeah, no, she was incredible, right, to work Amazing. with. And she had such an incredible eye. And, you know, she, yes. she, was, she was generous and, you know, she could be tough too, you know. Yes. <laughs> she could tell you when you weren't doing something. Yes, but do you <laughs> remember in, in, in those rehearsals, like you just start to move and she go, <laughs> yeah. Change this. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And you'd be you're almost terrified to move because you go, oh. no. Change that. Okay. Now, but you know something? It's like somebody says, I think it was Suzette that says, you know that after those rehearsals with Trish, with the, all the stop and starts, mm -hmm. like by the time you do get to dance it, you yeah. really know it and you really feel it. <laughs> and then, of course, Mr. David. Oh, yes. Oh, my word, Sacra. Oh. You know, I have to, I think I told you this the other day when, um, 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 there was the little memorial for Trish that, David was doing. Yes. Eddie knew about it and he just sent it to me. He says, You gotta go and um, just go and do whatever. Anyway, yeah. so we did the Zoom and oh my word. And a lot of moments of just like, wow, you know. And then after we stayed in touch and listening to um um like seeing David after all these years. Yes. Oh my word. But Here's the funny thing, that day when you wrote to me, yes, that morning, I was just like in David and Trish and TDT mm. land. Oh, so, my gosh. <laughs> um, I usually wake up early, so I switched my computer on, and I must have accidentally pressed the iTunes button, because <laughs> yeah. what starts to play, and it's never, ever happened to me. The Mozart's Requiem. Oh, wow. And then what happens after that? Mm -hmm. I get a message from you. Really? <laughs> Completely. And what happens after that? I'm like Niagara Falls <laughs> sitting there writing to David, are you ever going to do Sacra again? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that piece. What a, oh, what a piece that we you know got to tour and the amazing countries that we went to and the people who oh were just so appreciative of it and do you remember when we were in um, poland oh and my word. we were in that huge theater and <laughs> you know uh oh my gosh yes. and and the standing ovations and yes. the people coming up on the stage and giving us yes. flowers it was just so touching and unbelievable and you know like that piece just closed you know the program so beautifully and it's just so human and heartfelt and completely that theater the yeah. the part that i don't remember the flower part i only remember how much it, it was like a marathon <laughs> you had to start running a mile away to get onto the stage so as not to be seen. Yes, it was huge. 
yes. and then you've got to run around the whole theater to get to the other side. Yes. And heaven forbid if you had to be on and you missed your cue. Yes, totally. I'm coming. Now, you know, I, I forgot to tell you, um, mm -hmm. do you remember Poland? I can't remember if it was that particular tour, but anyway, that year was the year that Mandela was set free and mm. where South Africans could vote for the first time. Oh. And of course, Mr. Ken Pearson says, you're going to vote. I said, I can't vote in, absolutely you are. And you know how the English accents like, no nonsense, you're <laughs> yes. not going to give me any lip. <laughs> it was, I couldn't give any lip because I'm just going to listen. I don't know how I was going to do it, but yes. because of him, Yes. I was able to vote for the first time in my life. Oh, my goodness, Mary Ann. That's yeah. incredible. Now, how lucky am I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How lucky were we to be blessed with all those amazing people? I know. Eh? Yeah. And so you don't, you, you don't see, um, uh, we can allow, um, let's say, this little thing or that little thing to bother us. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, you realize like how blessed you are yes. in so many ways that there's nothing that could really dampen your spirits unless that's what you're looking for. It warms my heart to know that you're still there and you, oh. you've you got so much that you're offering the school just as lucky as I was to be your roommate and to share the time with you in the school oh. and to be with Peter and Trish and David and, to, and Christopher having been blessed with those people you are have been such a huge blessing and now you get to share that gift with not only the school but with other up-and-coming company members you are so sweet to say that. Thank you so much. Um, I am wondering, after you left Toronto Dance Theatre, what did you do? Well, you know, uh, um, an unfortunate uh, uh, injury stopped my career like sudden. So for months I spent trying to get back to walking again. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if I needed um, surgery or not surgery. Anyway, a long story moving way past that. Um, I, I was studying Pilates in the meantime, and I couldn't physically do my exam, but I did my exams verbally. So oh. that again, but you see, going back quickly for a moment in the company, remember how um, we had to learn from the videos? Yes. <laughs> well, my way of learning was taking the video home and writing down every step. Uh -huh. And if I could write down the whole choreography, huh. now I was ready to do it physically. So it, I already had that thing to, how do you say, to learn visually. Yes. And so it gave me the chance, or Moira at start gave me the chance to do the, the exam um, verbally. Mm. So that was stunning. So, I mean, I love Pilates because I believe that Pilates really saved me. Moving on, um, um, I had written, like, let's say my own manuals in Pilates because it was important to me to understand the exercise. If I could write it down, then I could explain it. And then I could also, whether you have like knee or hip or neck or whatever, I could help you get to the next stage. So I studied the anatomy, I studied the whole nine yards and sort of created my own. So when my mom got ill, I went over to South Africa. But before that, I took Pilates to the South Africa wow. for a start. Yeah. So I went to teach their training because I'm certified as a teacher trainer. I'm not just um, a, a, a certified instructor. I'm certified teacher trainer for mm. instructors. Okay. So I took um, Pilates over to South Africa. That was amazing. And then I came back. And of course, um, my mom got ill. I went back to um, South Africa and that's where I stayed. And then the um, I couldn't 
uh, keep the connection with Start because they needed to move forward too. Okay. So I ended up needing to have a job and I just quickly, um, not quickly, but I did, um, I joined a company called Equilibrium and then I prepared their manuals for them. Yeah, to Canada. And that's when I found the BOSU. And so the BOSU is the half ball and that took over a whole new life. And so I've been teaching Pilates on the BOSU. Oh. And a long story thought through my friend Colleen, I got to teach Pilates on the BOSU at the University of Alcala in Spain. Wow. So in Spain, they're way ahead of us here in North America as far as Pilates and uh, the science of it and understanding the moves and mm. that's right down my alley because I love the intricacy of understanding how muscles connect one to the other in order for us to walk one foot in front of the other. And mm -hmm. um, a long story short, um, very blessed again to say that yes my program gets taught there because the the the, the couple that started pilates he's the doctor that teaches anatomy to the up-and-coming doctors that are going into the world wow. so they've made pilates mandatory huh. yeah so it's really fun when i go and teach there it's not only doctors, but physios and some physios and some, um, you name it, it's a gap. I did a little bit of uh, research on uh, Garuda, but yeah, no, Phil, let, let me know, like, understand what it's all about. <gasps> oh, 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 I'm going to roll my eyes and go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is Pilates on steroids. <laughs> It adds a component that I truly, truly believe that every dancer should do. There's not have to do, but it's a should. I hate when somebody tells me you should do this. Because <laughs> yeah. then I get, no, now I'm going to say yes. with a bit of an attitude, you should do Garuda. And James, my teacher, is um, was originally a but a dancer with the London Ballet. Hmm. He's originally from Goa, India. So okay. when he joined the London Ballet, um, movement, of course, was a big part of his world. And Garuda in Indian mythology, according to James and mythology itself, is Garuda is a large sacred bird that changes shape according to its function. So when you put that in the category of um, Pilates, it's with passion. I'm going to say, yes, it's Pilates on steroids. It is <laughs> spectacular. How your body feels before and after is amazing. It's this machine that's, that kind of looks like a, a giant trapeze or Cadillac. Mm. But it includes the chi. The reformer bed splits in half. And I mean, I could talk your ear from here to forever <laughs> and it would be amazing to get your um, the company members to do a class or two with James. Huh. He is like, he's my guru. He used to work with a Madonna. Really? Yep. He used wow. to tour with her. Oh, yes. Okay. And you know why you stopped the ballet world? Um, they want, ah, uh, come now. Now we remember Graham's feet. Yeah. Yes. Remember how he's always trying to make that foot point? Yes, yes. <laughs> and when he would get frustrated, well, James had feet like Graham. Mm. And the company wanted him to have that long poised. And so they yeah. suggested that they break the foot in order Yikes. to get that point. So he said, thank you. Thank you, darling. Goodbye. <laughs> and then created Garuda. So with Garuda, it's not just on a machine. It's not just the Pilates equipment that can be, let's say, changed according to whatever function, but it's also um, mat work using the bands. 
and bar work. <laughs> Spectacular. Oh, my word. The three-dimensional movements hmm. of how he works to open up the ribs, to open up the back, to it is spectacular. Um, along with the foundation is the seated and standing. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Every, I truly believe, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true, yes, that yeah. every dancer, every person should experience what Garuda does. It's all them, um, when you go to Cirque du Soleil, Mm -hmm. And you see those contortionists, yep. their lives don't last very long, or they, mm -hmm. at least their careers, that's what I should say, doesn't last very long because um, they're in so much pain. Yeah. So I work with people that have hypermobility. I work with people who've had, like let's say, hip replacements, back surgeries. And now my thing is to avoid the above. Mm -hmm. And just like with the dance, balance starts from the feet up. Yeah. And how the feet works. We spent like six, eight hours on the feet and the hands. How is that even possible? Yes, yes. <laughs> your feet, that's all we need. Lift your feet. <laughs> Pointed at the top. Yes. No, the intricacies is so magical using your word, the intricacies is so magical. And to see somebody go from one stage to the next, like I had one particular client who couldn't even comb her hair without dislocating. Wow. Now she's got more lip than anything. Huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's doing things that would never have been possible. She probably, she says, and I'm quoting her, she says, if I didn't do this work, I'd be in a wheelchair. Wow. Wow. Yum, yum, yum. After all that, how many more blessings can I have? Oh, it's well, you keep growing. giving blessings too, so. <laughs> <laughs> and the more I can, yes, the more amazing. You've just given me that oh. opportunity, and I want to thank you so much. Oh, you're so very welcome. So and I, I just want to thank you for sharing Oh, your story and your memories and, you know, just uh, um, your experiences and, you know, some stuff I had had no idea. So it was so, so oh. great that you, that you, that we were able to speak. And I, I just thank oh. you so, I appreciate you so much. And thank likewise, you. Likewise, likewise. And I appreciate you so much. And I mostly appreciate that we can connect again. I know, I know. So many years have gone by of not speaking with you. So I'm never so, again. so happy. Yeah, never <laughs> again. I'm so happy that, you know, we were able to catch up. Oh, likewise, likewise. Oh, oh men, thank, thank you for having me.